Romantic Switzerland. Thy scenes are traced. With characters of strange wild loveliness. Beauty and desolation, side by side. Here Lotai rocks uprise, where nature seems. To dwell alone in silent majesty. Rob D by the snow, her stately palace Fram D. Of the white hills, towering in all their pride. The frost's gigantic mounds are lost in clouds. Like to vast castles reared in middle air. The ice has sculptured two strange imagery. Obelisks, columns, spires, fantastic piles. Some like the Polish D marble, others clear. As the rock crystal, others sparkling with. The hues that melt along the sunborn bow. And winter frowns upon the throne, which he. Has been whole ages raising, and beneath. The gloomy volleys, like his footstool lie. Where summer never comes where never spring. Wreathes the young flowers round her golden hair. The sun looks forth in beauty, but in vain. Those dark veils never know the light of noon. But there they hide them in their sullenness. As the pale spirit of desolation shows. Them for his lonely haunt. No trace hath been. Of living thing upon those untracked e snows. Not hath passed e o'er them but the printless wind. Even that wild deer, which loves the mountain side. Springs the abyss, and dares the venturous path. We shrink to look upon, yet comes not here. For perilous were the rocks, and the false ice. Were slippery as the friendships of this life. When most we lean on them, most tree trous then. Smooth but deceiving, and the precipice. Yawns in its fearful darkness close beneath. So close, that but a single step aside. And human help were vanity indeed. And o'er them lowers destruction, high in air. Upon those jutting crags, whose rugged sides. Riven in fragments, and like ruins pildy. Seem as that giants of those ancient days. When earth-born creatures braved th Olympic gods. Those of whom fable tells, had torn away. Rocks from their solid base, and with strong arm. Parted the mountains, there the avalanche hangs. Mighty, but tremulous, just a light breath. Will loosen it from off its airy throne. Then down it hurls in wrath, like to the sound. Of thunder amid storms, or as the voice. Of rushing waters death in its career. The lurking tempests hold their gathering place. Within these caves, waiting the angry winds. Which are to bear their terrors through the skies. But mid these scenes of wintry gloom, are some. Fair relics of the springtime blossoms, like. The sunny smiles of May, as if some breeze. Just wandered e from delightful Italy. Had brought the blessings of its birthplace here. And lovely are the volleys which extend. Beneath the mountains, oh. How sweet it is. To gaze around when summer sunset sheds. Its splendor in the west, when the bright clouds. Warm with the hues of eve, gleam o'er the sky. As t'were some heavenly spirit veiled e his form. In bursts of glory from a mortal eye. When glowing in the ray, the glaciers shine. With all the opal's varied coloring. And every tint that tulip beds disclose. Gilds the rich pageantry of parting day. The golden arches, rich with purple gems. Pillars of light, and crimson colonnades. Like the gay palaces of fairyland. Which flit upon the thought, when the young eye. Dwells in rapt wonder on the enchanted tale. Beneath are sun bright veils and silver lakes. The blue waves mantled with reflected red. The sky's bright image on the stream impressed. Green vineyards wreathing round the steep hill's side. And groups of cheerful peasantry reclandy. By their white dwellings, round whose lowly thatch. The light laburnum waves her yellow hair. And rising on the gale, is heard the sound. Of rustic music, of that cherished e song. The Switzer loves, whose every note is fraught. With thoughts of love, youth, home and happiness. Raised on a rock which overlooks the vale. Like to its guardian power, a ruin stands. It is overgrown with ivy, and the walls. Moldering around, are grey with aged moss. There is yet left one melancholy hall. The roof is riven, and the big rain drops beat. Upon the weed-grown floor, and sunbeams fall. Almost in mockery, for they are fraught. With too much happiness for scenes like this. It has no tapestry but the spider's web. No music save the screech owl's fearful cry. And the bat's noisy flight, or when the wind. Howls through it drearily, 
as Tora dirge. Mourning its fallen fortunes. Ask its fate. Of those who dwell around, and they will tell. The wild romantic tales of other days. Remembrances that linger like the tints. Of evening blushes neath the veil of night. Such is the tale of which my lyre would tell. Unskilty and plaintive are the notes it breathes. I scarce may hope to catch one echo de sound. One murmur of the strain I love so well. My wreath, if wreath at all my harp may claim. Will be of simplest field flowers. Oh! Belovdi! Inspirer of thy youthful minstrel's dream. How dear the meed of fame would be to me. For thou must see it, and thy hand would give. The brightest blossom that could sparkle there. Thine was the earliest smile that ever shed. Its cheering light on my young laurel's growth. Though other praise be dear, where is the bard? To whom the voice of flattery is not sweet. Yet never, never can approval's smile. Be half so treasured e, half so preized as thine. It was a night of gloom, strange shadowy forms. Rode on the dreary wind, which hoarsely blew. A prelude to the tempest's gathering. Darkness was on the sky, and murky shades. Obscured the brightness of the rising moon. Which, struggling, threw at times a silvery smile. Soon disappearing, and rebellious clouds. Crowded around and mocked their gentle queen. The stars were hidden, one, and one alone. Shed o'er the west her solitary ray. And well that one might linger, it had been. In days which have a hallowed memory. The star peculiar to the smiling power. Of love and beauty, never more than now. Could it seem woman's emblem, so her light. Should shine mid darkness, and her loveliness. Cheer the dull hour of gloom e'en that is past. A cloud like death came over it, and quenched e. Its tender beam, at once the storm poured e forth. Its cup of fury, and the blasts arose. Sweeping among the mountains with a sound. Of anger and of anguish, laughter, groans. And shrieks as if of torture, and deep sobs. Mingled together, and at times the voice. Of thunder spake in wrath, and crashing woods. Fierce gusts, and echoing caves, dread answers gave. The spirit of the lightning fiercely rolled e. His eyes of fire athwart the sky, and rent. The veil of blackness with his burning glance. Dark lower d the fearful night, but onward still. The traveler urgd his course, there was no light. To point the gloomy path, save when a flash. Clear d its blue flame around. The wood is past. And he has gained d the steep ascent which leads. To Ethlin's castle he has entered now. Tis a young warrior, and his bosom wears. The Red Cross. Instant cries of joy arise. And words of greeting, one to meet him sprang. And clasped him in her arms, while his warm cheek. Was wet with her sweet tears of tenderness. My brother. Oh, my brother. Welcome home. She started back, half sorrow half surprise. From his averted clasp, and on him gazed he. Almost reproachfully, and then her glance. Fell on a stranger's form. She turned e and hid. Her gathering blushes in her father's arms. The stranger spoke no word, but gave an urn. Unto that venerable chieftain's hand. It told its tale too well, the dear, the lost. For whom their lips yet trembled with the words. Of fond affection hailing his return. He was gone from them, and the gates of death. Had clossed e forever on their earthly love. Most heavily this blight fell on the heart. Of Ethlin's lord. Ernest had been his pride. On whom each bosom hope had built its throne. With what proud joy the warrior sire had marked e. The promise of his boyhood, when a child. A very infant in his nurse's arms. His eye would sparkle at the trumpet's voice. And his young cheek grow red, when tales were told. Of glorious battle and heroic deeds. It came, the wish e for time, and Ernest took. His father's sword, and sought the fields of war. When Europe poured her thousands on the east. That sword was claimed e by no unworthy hand. Again it flashed e the reddest in the fight. It was a hero's still. But all too soon. Crowed in his spring of glory, Ernest fell. In that lone moment, when all earthly ties. More fond, more holy, twine around the heart. He thought upon his home, and in that thought. There was a chill more terrible than death. He gazed upon the chief, 
who knelt beside and cooled his burning lips with the fresh spring and held his dying brow Orlando, we together sought these fatal plains, and still our course has been together, and our swords have been as one, oh by thy love for me and by thy faith, let not my ashes mix with this accursed earth, but let them rest their last sad sleep in my own Switzerland my spirit would not slumber in a grave on which a father's blessing was not breath dee. That was not moistened dee by my sister's tears. Orlando, thou wilt tell them, that my death was such as well became a hero's child. How precious is the memory of those who slumber in the tomb. Their lightest word and look is then recalled dee, and hallowed as tender relics love had left behind. Sweet but sad treasures. Ah, how dear the thought which dwells on those departed, when the heart beats quick with fond reflections, and the worth the praise of those gone to their silent sleep comes like a healing balm to sorrow's wound. Most soothing was it to the father's grief to hear how gloriously his earnest fell. Still would he ask Orlando of the fields which they had fought together, and the tale though often told, was sweet unto his ear as the blithe peal that tells the traveler Wayworn and faint, a refuge is at hand. And there was one who listened to the tale. And treasured thee every word Orlando breathed. Young Adelaide, those accents are to thee. As sounds of heaven ly music, which no time. Or change can ever banish from the heart. Oh, love! How exquisite thy visions are! Spring of the soul, what flowers can equal thine? When every other virtue fled from earth. Thou linger dst still last solace of our path. What were the world, bereft of thee, a void? Without one sunny place on which the eye might rest for her sweet refreshment. Thou art not a summer blossom only, it is thine to bloom in beauty on the wintry hour. When storms and sorrows press the spirit down, then dost thou come, a gentle comforter, tenderly binding up the broken heart. Celestial thy first dawning. It is like the morn awakening the smiling hours, calling the flowers from their fragrant dreams, and breathing melody and perfume around. So does thy influence brighten on the soul, waking it to a new enchanted world, where every thought is gladness. Never yet hath love dwelt in a lovelier temple than that youthful maiden's form, she had now reached e. youth's fairest season, when the opening flower is just between the green bud and full rose. There was a melancholy beauty in the deep blue of her eyes, twas sad, yet soft, melting in tenderness neath the dark lash. That curtain dee its mild splendor, every glance bespoke a spirit wild and fanciful, a heart that answered dee sorrow's slightest thrill, and thoughts that dwelt not on reality, but loved dee to wander in imagined dee scenes, mid fancy's fair creation reveling. A tender bloom just dawned dee upon her cheek, too pale to say the rose was glowing there. But the soft hue which the white violet wears on its perfumed dee leaf, save when a blush deepened dee to crimson radiance o'er her face. Her voice was sweet as the last dying close, waked from the wild guitar in Spanish groves. When the fond lover pours his soul in song, an echo answers like a maiden's sigh. It had those silvery tones which, lingering, hang upon the ear, and melt into the heart young, lovely with the sunny brow of youth, more touching from the pensive shade which threw a magic charm around it. Such she was, fair as the springtime of her native vales. I need not say how sweet the accents fell, when first Orlando told his tale of love. How tender was the blush that welcomed it. Nor need I tell how happy were the hours that passed ye away in love's enchanted dreams. Twas all the bard e'er feigned ye, or young hearts felt of joys, like spring days, bright and fugitive. But not long in the myrtle bowers of bliss. The warrior may remain, he may not see. His laurels pine in shade, or the deep stain. Of rust upon his sword. Again the sound. Of arms recall D. Orlando to the field. And he will go, not Adelaide's, the love. That would enchain him to its witchery. No, she would bid her lover from her arms. E'en though her heart were breaking, point to fame. 
albeit tore more than death unto her soul. They wandered e through a scene, where every spot was tracked e with some soft record of the heart, where the eye could not glance, but it must gaze on some memorial of their happiness. Here winged e with pleasure moments fled, as in a magic circle, where hours passed, but left no sorrow for their loss perished e like flowers, dying in odors, while fresh blooms succeed. But these were dreams of blessedness departed, and the long lingering looks they now were giving, perchance would be their last, another day. And, Adelaide, thy love will be afar. The arm now round thee thrown so tenderly, will be the reddest in the ranks of death. That voice, that sinks so sweetly on thy ear, low murmuring the gentle tones of love, will swell the war cry, and breathe loud defiance. It was a night of summer's mildest rain. Calm, lonely sweetness. Scarce the breeze had power. To waft the fragrant sighs born with the dew. It did not stir a leaf, nor wake a sound. But all was quiet as an infant's sleep. Save when the distant waterfall was heard. Like airy notes of fairy minstrelsy. Twas a fair scene. Beside them flowers bloomed e. Such as the earth puts forth to grace the step. Of a celestial visitant, the turf. Gleamed e with the diamond dew and overhead. The half-formed e crescent of the young moon smilled e. On the blue ocean of the starry heaven. A few light clouds were wandering around. Still varying like love's dear uncertainty. Now flowing gracefully, like beauty's veil. Now as the frothing waves upon the sea. And ever, as like snow they scattered e round. Gleamed e forth the glorious stars. At distance seen. The ice-clad mountains rose magnificent. Like marble palaces that Rome once reared e. In her now long past days of mightiness. Girdling them in dark woods the black pines waved. O'er them the night had thrown her deepest shroud. Gloom, where the moon had wasted her sweet smiles. Shades that she might not pierce, where brightness fell. Vainly, as soothing words upon despair. They lingered e there, Orlando and his love. His fair betrothed bride, each step was linked e. With some associate sweetness, and recall d. Some thought that love had hallowed e. Love will shed. His magic hues, where'er his pinions find. A resting place, the wilderness will smile. And blossom like a rose, if he be there. They reached e a shadowy alcove, where oft. Th unconscious hours had passed unmarked e away. It was in young affection's earliest day. They riced e the fragrant temple, and then said. No flower should ever deck their favorite haunt. That was not hallowed e by the minstrel's song. Or fancy could not paint some tender thought. They reared e it neath a pine which long had braved. The perilous bursting of the winter's storm. The stem was yet unbent, but it was scathed e. By the red lightning, and the tempest's wing. Had passed it, withering like adversity. A white rose gracefully around it twin d. Cheering its ruin, and united still. Even amid decay, like faithful love clinging more closely to the wounded spirit. Around were brightest flowers, the myrtle flung. Its snowy buds a wreath for constancy. The young moss rose threw from its vermil cheek. The green veil, fresh and beautiful as those. That caught their warm carnation from the lips. Of Venus, when she kissed e their fragrant leaves. Fraught with cerulean hues, the violet. Half opened e, timidly, its fair blue eyes. Close by its side, the lily pensively. Bowed e down its languid head, pale as the cheek. Faded by sorrow. There the hyacinth bloomed e. With liveliest colors, some like rubies glowed e. Some bright with Tyrian purple, others wore. The melting azure of a summer sky. Some white and stainless, others tinged e with red. Like the last warmth of a departing blush. Here had they come to watch the earliest smile. Of morning dimple into roseate light. Here breezes, which had bathed e their burning wings. In streams, whose birthplace is amid the clouds. Breath e mountain freshness o'er the sultry noon. Eve found them here listing her vesper song. And stars had been the lamps to light their bowers. And oft at that sweet solitary time. Would young Orlando listen to the voice. Of her he loved e, soft as the moonlight song. The fabled siren breath e, and at his praise. A blush like daybreak and a smile, would play. 
upon her cheek the heart's own eloquence. It was the hour of parting, and they breathed deep. Those vows of tender constancy the hopes, the fears, the fond regrets that crowd the time of love's farewell. Hope, for what joy can thrill the maiden's bosom with such throb of bliss as when, returning from the fields of death, the warrior comes in all the pride of fame and seeks his dearest trophy in her smile. Fear, for what heart but sickens at the thought of danger darkening round some cherished e being. A few short hurried vows of changeless faith. And their farewell was taken silently. That sorrow is not much, which seeks for words. To image forth its grief. Methinks a do. Is cold, when uttered with aught else but tears. Tis the bright hour of noon, the sun looks forth. In all his splendor, o'er the stirring scene. Of thousands rushing onward to the strife. They come in armed ranks, and spear, and shield. Are glistening in the ray. How beautiful! How glorious, and how glad they move to death! The very banners sweep as they were proud to spread their crimson foldings to the air. Here the young warrior curbs his foaming steed, impatient for his first of fields, and here the toil-worn veteran, with his locks of age, white as the war plume waving o'er his helm, pants for the bursting of the battle storm. How bright, how envied, is the warrior's fate! For him will glory bind her choicest wreaths. Of fadeless laurels, his the stormy joy. Which the brave spirit feels at honor's call. When the bard wakes his proudest minstrelsy. And what can thrill the harp like warlike theme. His deeds will be remembered, and his name. Will lie forever in the breath of song. Love's fairest roses neath the laurel grow. And woman's fondest sigh is for the brave. Upon a lofty tower stood Adelaide. And watched ye the scene below you might have gazed ee. on those fair tresses floating in the wind, the white veil flowing o'er her graceful form, her arms crossed ee pensively upon her breast, and eyes, now upwards rise ee in tears to heaven, now glancing mournfully on those beneath, and deemed ee that peace had paused ee one moment, ere she winged ee her flight from earth, so fair she was, like to some lovely creature of the skies, her eye dwelt on Orlando's form, who yet, Linger dee to catch one dear, one parting glance. That last look, treasure dee so in after hours. He wore the colors she had given, white. And green, the hue of promise, born by spring. He passed, and Adelaide is left with naught. But hope, to cheer away the slow winged dee days. Hope, frail but lovely shadow. Thou dost come. Like a bright vision on our pathway here. Making the gloomy future beautiful and gilding our horizon with a light. The fairest human I can ever know. Fav right of heaven. Twas thine to pledge the cup. Of pleasure's sparkling waters undefilled e. But, oh. The draught was fleeting. Scarce thy lip. Touched e the clear nectar ere twas vanished. The soul of youth confides in thee, thy voice. Is love's own halcyon music, it is thine. To color every dream of happiness. I've pictured e thine a soft ethereal form. Like to some light creation of the clouds. Some bright aerial wonder, o'er thy cheek. The rose has shed its beauty, on thy brow. The golden clusters play and wreathe thee with flowers. Gay with a thousand transitory hues. The rainbow tints are gleaming in thy wings. Thy laughing eyes are blue not the deep shade. Worn by the melancholy violet. But the clear sunny blue of summer skies. And in thy hand a glass wherein the eye may gaze on many a wonder all is there that heart can pant for many a glorious dream meets the rapt sight no sooner seen than gone false as thou art O most elusive hope reproach is not for thee what though the flowers which thou dost scatter o'er our pilgrimage are evanescent yet they are most sweet who would not revel in thy witchery though all too soon the spell will be dissolved the moments of thy reign are blessed indeed. They are the purest pleasures life can boast. Reality is sadness. But thy power. Sheds its most soothing influence when the heart. Too full for utterance, beats a fond farewell. Then beams thy sunshine, lighting up a sky. Which else were thickest darkness, for what gloom. Is like the gloom of absence. But for thee. And thy sweet promises of meeting joys. 
the warm embrace, the look of love, the smile. The blissful words of welcome once again. Parting were as the shadow of the grave. Thus far my song hath reached thee again to thee. With whom my strain began, say, will thy smile. Beam on my harp, like sunshine upon flowers. To prove thee of which they die? Oh! If one note can boast of sweetness, tis from thee twas caught. Enough, enough. Whatever my fate may be, that song is transport, that wins praise from thee.